Good evening. God bless you again. It's good to be back in the house of the Lord. Thank God for all of you who are tuning in this evening to be a part of our midweek Bible study and prayer. And again, we thank the Lord for those who have come out to be in our sanctuary today to study along with us. We are just about winding up our study on New Testament miracles and so doing, we've been uh, looking intently at the miracles that Jesus performed during his earthly ministry. Uh, we've seen blinded eyes open. We've seen, um, what else have we seen? Deaf ears, unstopped tongues, loosened. We've seen the multitude fed. Uh, we saw the big catch. Uh, we've experienced quite a number of the miracles that Jesus performed. <clears throat> this evening, we want to center our discussion around Jesus' power to raise the dead. So we're going to be talking about uh, Jesus' miraculous power to raise the dead. In so doing, um, we find three instances in scripture uh, the raising of Jairus' daughter the raising of the widow's son at Nain Nain being the village or the city where they live and the raising of course the raising of Lazarus of Bethany um, the raising of the dead is probably foremost among the miracles that Jesus did. And I guess the miracle itself is so profound because when death invades the ranks, it leaves a sense of hopelessness, wouldn't you say? Death, death is final. Right. Uh, the average person, you think about death, they think, well, throw up both hands, walk away. Nothing else to be done. Right. If you were impoverished, if you were in want, in lack, you have hope mm -hmm. of one day having some ducats, having some money, being able to uh, give and to share with others. Mm -hmm. If you were bound by some uh, addiction or whatever, you have a hope, don't you, of, of one day being free, not having to deal with whatever it is that's binding you. And of course, if you're ill, if you're sick, you have hope of one day getting well, you know. So some things we've seen Jesus do, that, that was hope. That was always hope. But in death, when death occurs, there's no hope. We, we think, well, this is it. That's all. That's all. That's all. That's the, that's, it's the end of the road. It's final, nothing else uh, to be done. We lift our hands, we walk away. That death to the average person has that degree of, of finality. But for believers, it's a little different, OK? Um, for a believer, death is not an end. Thank God. <laughs> for a believer, death is what? Only the beginning. And, 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 and actually, I have found, I don't know if you can share this sentiment, but I have found that you don't really, really get a real revelation of death 
until he comes to live on the inside. Uh huh. Until you get life. Let me say it that way. You don't really understand death until you experience eternal life. Then you understand that it's just a transition. It's just a step away. It's just a breath away. The, the Bible says what to be absent from the body uh -huh, is to be present with the Lord. So it, it, to, for us, it's not an end. It, it's, not, it's not final. You just simply take off. You just, you leave this, okay? Because you, you only need this because you're in the earth. This is an earth suit, okay? You need this because you live in the earth. But once your time in the earth ends, you don't need this no more. So you just, that's how simple death is. So it takes having him. It, it, it takes a revelation of eternal life, life eternal, to really understand uh, death for a believer, okay? So let's talk a little bit about the um, instances, and we can't, we can't talk about all three. We can talk about at length. Let me say it this way. We can't talk at length about all three because we simply don't have enough time to go through the raising of Lazarus. So I probably walk you through it as quickly as I can. We'll make it the last one because if you, I didn't even include it on your sheet because it's 45 verses. It's a lengthy discourse. It's 45 verses that explains what happens, every detail that happens when Jesus raised Lazarus. So for the sake of time and space, we're going to talk about the death, the raising of uh, Jairus' daughter, and we're going to talk about the raising of the widow's son at nine, and then we'll kind of sum it up with the death, with the raising of, of Lazarus. So do I have my reader? Uh, reader, you got a mic? Not yet? Okay. Uh, so um, we're going to, and again, the, 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 the scriptures are on, on, your, on the extra sheet I gave you. So you won't, I'm spo I know I've spoiled you all. You don't even have to um, pull out your devices. You don't have to bring a Bible. Mm, you got a good Bible study teacher. Amen. Do all the work for you. All you have to do is come and study with me. <laughs> oh, uh huh. That's what they say about me. They say I spoil everything I touch. And I, I love that. I love spoiling God's. You know what? And, I, and I'm off the subject, but I think that for a leader, when God blesses you with people to minister to, you ought to spoil them. Uh huh. Uh huh. Pastor Will got a spoil. Uh -huh, he got a spoil. So I'm just following my leader. Okay, we're gonna read concerning um, the raising of Jairus' daughter. The scripture is found in Mark five. We're gonna do verses 21 through 24, and then we're gonna do we're gonna skip. Because in between his going to raise uh, Jairus' daughter, something happens. We talked about that before. He stops on his way to heal the woman, remember that, with the issue of blood. So we, we cut that part out. So we'll skip that part for the sake of time and space. And we'll, we'll pick up at verse 35 uh, through... 43. Okay, I'm ready. And when Jesus was passed over again by ship unto the other side, much people gathered unto him, and he was nigh unto the sea. Okay. So, another in almost every instance we find Jesus leaving one place, entering another. 
and he, he, he travels either by foot or he travels by ship or small boat. This is another one of the instances where he comes into an area and he comes by way of ship and he's very near to the water. Let's move on. And behold, there cometh one of the rulers of the synagogue, Jairus by name, mm -hmm. and when he saw him, he fell at his feet. So when, when, when he reaches the seashore, there's a man who approaches him, okay? And the thing that stands out about Jairus, it says that he, what did it say? He, that he fell at his feet. And what did he do? And besought him greatly. He besought him greatly. Saying, saying, my little daughter lieth at the point of death. I pray thee, come and lay thy hands on her, that she may be healed, and she shall live. So the thing that stands out about him is that he is, the Bible says, he's a ruler of the synagogue. And normally and naturally so, if a person is in that position, they got a little air about them. Don't you think, you know, a little, little pride, you know. But this man has a need. And when you have a need, you have to put the pride aside. Okay? So when Jesus approaches, he, he approaches Jesus, but he falls at his feet, which is a sign of, hum, okay, of humility and What's he doing? Worship. worship. He's worshiping him. He, perhaps he has heard Jesus teach or he has heard testimonies, but the word is out and he knows that this man is not just a man. That he's a man that has power and authority. And so he falls at his feet in, in, as a, in a sign of worship. And he says, he, the scripture said he besought him. That is, he beg, he's begging him to come to his house because his daughter is lying at the point of death. Okay, what verse is that? Okay, let's move on. And Jesus went with him, and much people followed him and thronged him. Okay, so Jesus willingly goes home with Jairus. And on the way, it says that many people are thronging him. And you know what happened next. That's when the woman with the issue of blood um, approaches him. He heals her, and then it picks up in 35. He's going about his business. Let's go. While he yet spake, there came from the ruler of the synagogue's house certain which said, Thy daughter is dead. Why troublest thou the master any further? In other words, I got bad news. Your little girl is dead. Don't trouble the master anymore. In other words, what? It's final. It's final. Okay. What happens next? As soon as Jesus heard the word that was spoken, he saith unto the ruler of the sun God, be not afraid, only believe. So Jesus realizes that the man now is in fear, right? He's, broke, he's fearful, he's broken hearted, he's out of it, his daughter is dead. So Jesus what? Comforts him. He has compassion on him and he comforts him and he says to him, be not afraid. Only do what? Believe. Only believe. Mm -hmm. Only believe. Mm -hmm. It's going to take faith, isn't it? Mm -hmm. To get the little girl up. Okay. So you can't go say, well, right, Jesus, you can go on. She's dead. I, I just go home and get ready to bury her. No. Something is about to happen. Don't lose hope. Mm -hmm. Don't lose hope. Uh, believe. Okay. Then what happened? And he suffered no man to follow him, save Peter and James and John, the brother of James. Okay. 
So he's going on to Jairus' house. And I would imagine all of the disciples were with him. Not only all of the disciples, but the, peop the people that were standing around and people, uh, Jairus' friends, whomever. But the scripture says all of them couldn't go in with him to minister to the little girl. Why was that? Why, could, why couldn't he take everybody? Why couldn't everybody go? He didn't, he, right. He didn't want anybody to say, ain't no need of praying for her. She dead. You just wasting time. Come on, y'all, let's go home. And he, he wasting his time. He didn't want, he didn't need to hear that. Because fear, doubt, and unbelief cancels out faith. Okay? Move on. And he cometh to the house of the ruler of the synagogue, and seeth the tumult, and them that wept and wailed greatly. So when he gets to the house, I imagine the mother, and you know, uh, back during that time, they called them mourners. They called them people to mourn. So I, the people are crying, they're wailing, they're, you know. They're gr grief and sorrow. Fills the house, okay? Then what happened? And when he was come in, he said unto them, Why make this ado and weep? The damsel is not dead, but sleepeth. Okay, why are you all crying? Why are you so bent out of shape? She's not dead, she's just taking a nap. She's sleeping. And what did they do? They laughed him to school. <laughs> and they said, you crazy. <laughs> That's what they wanted if they didn't say it. Uh -huh, you, you got to be kidding me. She is dead. We checked her. She has no pulse. No pulse. She's, not bleed, she's not breathing. She's dead. And they laughed him to school. Okay, then what happened? But when he had put them all out, he taketh the father and the mother of the damsel, damsel and them that were with him, and entereth in where the damsel was lying. Okay, so he puts everybody out except for his followers, Peter, James, and John. His backup, okay, he puts everybody out. And he takes the little girl by the hand. And Trisha, you might have to let Pastor Will do the next verse for you. <laughs> <laughs> he's, skilled, he's skilled at that. So what happened, Pastor Will? Well, like one of the last, uh, okay, you you came. You, okay, that's close enough. <laughs> That's about as close as any of us would have gotten. <laughs> so he speaks to her in Arab, I would imagine. Okay, we call it speaking in tongues. He spoke in another, he spoke in another language. But what he said meant arise. He spoke, what did he do? He spoke the word. He took her by the hand and he spoke the word. And what happened? And straightway the damsel arose mm -hmm. and walked. Mm -hmm. For she was of the age of 12 years, and they were astonished with a great astonishment. And he charged them straightly that no man should know it, and commanded that something should be given to her to eat. So he speaks the word, and she... Now, let's be clear. She was not heavily sedated. She was not in a coma. She was dead. She was dead. I don't know how long, perhaps some hours, because he, Jairus had to travel wherever Jesus was, right? Get, and then they had to come back to the house. And so a, a span of time had elapsed. 
So she, she wasn't headless today. She wasn't in a coma. She was dead. But the power of God raised her by the spoken word of Jesus. Okay, now, flip over. And we have um, another situation where Jesus raises the dead. Here, uh, from Luke chapter 7, and verses 11 through 17, um, we see the raising of the widow's son at Nain. Nain being the, the, the name of the village or the city where they live. Okay, let's go. And it came to pass the day after that he went into a city called Nain, and many of his disciples went with him and much people. Okay, go on. And when he came nigh to the gate of the city, behold, there was a dead man carried out, the only son of his mother, and she was a widow, and much people of the city was with her. Okay, so Jesus comes into a city called Nain, and as he enters the city, what does he see? A funeral procession. Mm -hmm. Okay, again, the, the man that was being carried on the way to the cemetery, on the way to the grave, was not a sick man. Okay, he didn't faint. He was dead. It was a funeral procession. They were on their way to bury him, which means that he had been dead for a, at least a number of days. Okay. And her neighbors, her friends, her family, her gathering, they were with her. And what happened? And when the Lord saw her, mm -hmm. he had compassion on her and said unto her, Okay, stop not. right there. So when the Lord saw her, what happened? He had, remember we talked about that last week? We talked about the scripture that says, Come boldly before the throne of grace to find to obtain mercy, to obtain mercy, and then find grace. Mercy, compassion, Be before he re releases the power, he relates to the situation, okay? So he, he related to what the woman was going through. She was a widow, this was her only son. She was about to bury her only son. So when Jesus saw her, his heart went out to her. You know, you've been there. You know people who have lost loved ones, and you have compassion. We call it sympathy. We, we get a card that says, in sympathy. You know, we go home and cook a meal, and you know, whatever we do, to, to express our compassion, to show mercy for those who are hurting, who those who are sorrowing and expressing grief. Okay, then what happened? He had compassion on her and mm. said unto her, Weep not. Mm -hmm. And he came and touched the buyer, and they that bear him stood still. And he said, Young man, I say unto thee, Arise. So he has compassion on the mother. He ministers, he ministers the word to her. What did he say to her? What did he say to her? Mm -hmm. No, what did he say to the, to the widow? Before he, weep not. Don't cry. It's a hard sale, you know, when you're hurting, when your heart is broken and somebody tells you don't cry. But he says to her, weep not. And then he goes over and he does not speak right away. He, he touches the briar where, where the, 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 the sun was laid. And then what happened when he touched it? The, and the people stood still because they realized that something was about to happen. This was Jesus. And then what happened?
And then he spoke a word. He says to the young man, arise. And what happened then? And he that was dead sat up and began to speak. Now, I'm surprised that the people hung around. <laughs> ah, you know, you out there and you carrying a dead man and all of a sudden the dead man sits up. Uh, I'm surprised, I'm surprised he still had an audience. <laughs> a lot of us would have been gone. <laughs> all right, then what happened? And he delivered him to his mother. So he, he, he raises this young man from the dead and will, you know, in essence, present, gives her, she, he gave her her son back. He brought life back into her only son and presented him to her, okay? Is that it? And there came a fear on all. I, I guess so. <laughs> uh huh. And they glorified God, saying that a great prophet is risen up among us, uh -huh. and that God hath visited his people. Go right on. And this rumor of him went forth throughout all Judea and throughout all the region round about. So, okay, now this, this wasn't fear so much as fright, but all. All. They were in all. Root word to awesome. They, 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 um, they acknowledge in their spirit that this is the Son of God. This, they said this is the prophet. They realized that somebody special has done something powerful. And they began to worship him. So there we have the raising of Jairus' daughter. We have the raising of the widow's son in name. And the third instance is found in John chapter 11. And again, it, it goes from verse 1 through 45. And, and let me just walk you through it very quickly, and then I'll do the message. Um, Jesus gets word that his friend is sick. When the messengers came to Jesus, they said to him, Master, the one that you loveth, in that song, they didn't, they didn't call him by name. They knew that Jesus loved him and he loved Jesus. They said, the one that you love is sick. And uh, Jesus, you remember, did not go right away. He let two days pass. And then he says to the disciples, uh, we're going to, 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 to see about Lazarus. And they say it's something like, well, you know, the Jews are out to get you. They're going to stone you, whatever. But he said, well, uh, Lazarus sleepeth, and we're going to wake him. They said, oh, if he sleep, he's doing all right. Mm -hmm. But what he really meant, what did he really mean? He said Lazarus was sleeping, but he really meant Lazarus was dead. And so on the way to Bethany, that's where Lazarus lived. And remember, Lazarus is the brother to Mary and Martha. Okay? And so Martha comes out to meet him, and she says to him, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. She said, but, hold on. <laughs> she said, but I know whatever you ask God, he'll do it. Uh, Jesus said to her, your brother will live again. She said, oh, I know he'll live in the resurrection. And then Jesus says to her what I gave you as the um, text up there. Jesus said, answered and said to her, what did he say? He said, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, what? Yet shall he live. And whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall what? Shall never die. And then he asked her the all-important question. Believest thou? In other words, you got to believe it. 
You got to believe what I'm saying to you. Okay. And so then uh, a little later, Mary comes out and she says the same thing. If you had been here, my brother wouldn't have died. And Jesus said, where have you laid him? And they take him to the tomb. And you remember the tomb was a cave that had a big stone in front of it. And uh, before he asked them to roll the stone away, that's down about verse 35, the scripture says that he did something. What did he do? He wept. He cried. He cried. And the people said, oh, how he loved him. His heart was broken. He knew he was going to rape, but, but it was, I, 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 would, I would think that it was more compassion for Mary and Martha, you know, because he knew what he was about to do. And then after he cried, he prayed. And he said, Father, I thank you. So, he, so in the time of death, he is praying a prayer of thanksgiving. He said, Father, I thank you. Why do I thank you? Because you've always heard me. He said, all the only reason I'm praying <laughs> is for these folks that are standing around. And then he says to the folk, roll the stone away. He cries out in a loud voice, Lazarus, come forth. And you know what the old preacher said. If he hadn't called him by name, all, everybody dead would have gotten up. They love to say that. Uh. <laughs> and perhaps it's so. If he had just stood in the midst of the cemetery, dead bodies, and said, come forth, everything dead would have gotten up. So he had to specify spirit and life, and life would have come back. Uh, before, but remember, before he, before when, he, when he asked them to roll the stone away, uh, Mary said to him, oh, by now what? He's thinking. In other words, he had, huh? Right, he had been dead for four days, so the body is decomposing, and that, you know, so she said, by now he's thinking. Mm -hmm. So what do we find out? That it doesn't mean, you can't be too dead. <laughs> you can't be too dead for Jesus to bring you back. Because the little girl died on the cot. The little son died in the, at the cemetery but before he went to the grave. But this man had been in the grave, dead, and Jesus calls him forth, and he comes forth. The Bible said, wrapped in grave clothes, and Jesus said, loose him, let him go free. So what's the message? Uh, there's a difference in being raised and being resurrected. See, you, you had two. You had a conversation between Martha and 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 and, and Jesus, and, and and she he was he was talking about he was saying her her brother would rise again. He was going to raise him from the dead, and she said, "Well, I know he'll he'll be raised at the resurrection." So there's a difference between being raised and being resurrected. Okay, when you're raised, what happened? You die again. See, Lazarus died again. The little son died again. Uh, Jairus' daughter died again. But when you are resurrected, you are resurrected to eternal life. There was no resurrection before Jesus went to Calvary. When Jesus went to Calvary, was crucified, died, and was buried, that's what happened. The third day, what happened? He was resurrected. We call, it, we call it Resurrection Sunday, don't we? 
He was resurrected. He was brought back uh, to life to live forevermore. Good news. When you are a believer, when you believe in the Lord God Almighty, you have that same uh, hope that one day you will be resurrected. In other words, death for us is not final. It's just a passageway. Because if, when we are, if we are ready, when he comes, we, the Bible, then it says, the dead in Christ shall rise first. That will be, that will be a time of resurrecting, resurrection of the, of the dead. And if you are a believer, if you are a believer in him, then we have that to look forward to. So, um, the lesson shows the difference between being raised from the dead and being resurrected from the dead. You can be raised from the dead, but you're going to die again. But if you're resurrected from the dead, then you'll live forevermore. And isn't that what all of us are living for? That's what we're looking, looking forward to. We're living, thank God, to live again. So, um, I don't know if we're going to be able to do any more of the miracles. We, we just have to see what happens. We usually, at this point in time, we usually um, break for the holidays, and we, we use that time to, of course, celebrate with our families and to see God for where he would take us the next year. So I can't say what's going to happen at the beginning of the year, but I don't know if God will give me to go in another direction, but I hope that going through these miracles have helped in, in doing the messages have, have helped you to relate some things and to see some things that as it relates to uh, your life. Uh, we're going to pray. Um, we want to especially remember um, Alfreda King and the entire Lewis family. And we want to continue to pray for Brother Alonzo Suggs and any of our other members who uh, may be struggling right now in your health and just need a special touch from the Lord. Um, we're going to pray and believe God that he will touch your body, uh, touch your situation, whatever that need may be. Father, we thank you again for all that you are and for all that you do. We thank you for how good you are and how good you've been in our lives. God, we thank you for blessing us and protecting us moment by moment and day by day. We realize, God, that lurking all about us is danger, uh, things that could take us out. But God, you in your infinite wisdom, and because of your mercy and your grace, have sustained us and kept us and allowed us to live on. And we thank you for it. We hold up those of our members, oh God, who are struggling in their health. We especially hold up our freedom and the Lewis family, and Brother Suggs. And we pray that you will supernaturally touch their bodies right now. Give them a miracle, oh God, a healing miracle. In the name of Jesus, we thank you, God. We praise you because we know that you are able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we may ever ask or think. And all of our members, oh God, who are struggling today, whatever that need might be, we pray that you will meet that need in the name of Jesus. We continue to hold up our pastor. We pray that you will continue to bless him, God, and crown his head with wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. Give him directions for the upcoming year. We pray, oh God, and thank you for the vaccine and for the people that will be vaccinated. And we pray for a supernatural uh, deliverance in the upcoming months, God, that we'll be delivered from this uh, pandemic that has crippled our lives for the past few months. Thank you for all that you're doing now. We, we can't praise you enough. In spite of everything that's going on, God, we find no fault in you. We thank you. We praise you. Bless our nation again. Those things that are coming forth, 
under this new administration. We thank you for it. We thank you for the people that have been put in place and for the wisdom and for uh, the, the, the ability to try and make this a better place. Thank you, O oh God, for everything that you do and for all that you are. We give you praise. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Thank God. <clears throat> now we thank you for tuning in again, and we look forward to seeing you the next time. And until we do, we pray that you'll have a happy holiday season, that you'll uh, follow the CDC guidelines and be, be uh, particularly concerned about your health and the health of others. And we look forward to seeing you next time.